all right guys in this lesson we're gonna go over cold calling you guys got your dialers you guys got batch leads uploaded the list to your dialer and now it's time to get into cold calling i have my head of sales sean with me we're going to be going over the cold calling script that we use for our team and it's not really a script it's more of a cold calling structure because we're believers that you can't script a phone call there's wholesale scripts out there where it'll tell you exactly what to say. And then the first line, it goes in a different direction and now you're lost. So we're going to go over our wholesale structure. Sean um, kind of explained to us the importance of having this structure that we have laid out and what we're going to go into first. Absolutely. So the structure is important. And, and I'm really glad that you said that in the first place that, that we don't do a word for word script because you're right. Those calls they they don't always go the way that it's scripted out and then if you're used to something you get stuck then you don't sound like you know what you're doing with so this structure is is really good at covering everything that needs to be covered while allowing enough improv for you guys to put your own personalities into it so that you, it doesn't sound like a script that's the most important thing is you want to you want to come off very natural so whatever your personality is whatever the best parts inject that into this structure make it your own and then you'll be successful all right. Exactly. Yep. So we're going to go into obviously the first part of the call, Sean. This is the most important part because this makes or break if the seller is going to hang up on you or not is the greeting stage. Can you take us into the greeting stage and how you and your team handle it? Absolutely. So anytime my team is working on a cold lead or a, you know, a lead they've never spoken to before, it hasn't been hit by a VA, whatever the situation is, they always get whatever uh, the most important stuff within the first few minutes, but it's it's also very important that you don't just throw it up out of your mouth. You can't just say it so fast because you're trying to get everything. You you have to have tact. It has to sound something like, "Hey, is this Calvin?" No, yep, this this Calvin. Hey, Calvin. Uh, my name is Sean. I was actually calling real quick. Don't want to take up too much of your time. Are you actually selling that property on 123 Main Street? Because if you are, we're interested in picking that up. Perfect Very simple. There. First simple. 10 seconds. You say who you are, what you want, and exactly what it's about. If they say yes, then it turns into something like this. Hey, you know what? That's great. I appreciate it. I always tell my team to say, you just let me know when I'm out of time. I know I called you out of the blue. Shouldn't take more than five, 10 minutes. And then you just go right into the next part. If they say no, then it, or if they say, yes, I'm ready to sell, but not right now, you schedule an appointment for later on and you do a two-part close. You give them two options. You want me to call you tomorrow morning or you want me to call you tomorrow afternoon? Let them pick one and then you go from there. If they say no, then you follow up with them in a month. Perfect. So now let's say they are intrigued in having a further conversation. We have to qualify them. Is this an actual lead? And then this would leads us into the discovery slash building rapport stage. And... Now, in the discovery stage, this is where we're going to find our four pillars of what an actual lead is. Four pillars of a lead is timeline, condition, motivation, and price. If we can get all four of those from the seller, this is considered a lead. Sean, go into the discovery stage on how we go and get these four pillars from the seller. Absolutely. So after I've talked to the seller and I've determined, yep, they actually want to sell. Yep, they're giving me some time to talk to them. I start going directly into what I call rapport mode. So I'm going to start asking questions about the property, but I'm also looking for any end that I can to deviate a little bit from the house to start building rapport. The last thing you want to say is, how's your day going? You sound like a salesman. You've already put up a wall when, when they said that, and you're now you're battling uphill. So just start reassuring them, hey, sure, this is not going to take very long. And then just start going through stuff about the actual house itself. And then once you find an opening is, uh, uh, you know, hey, why are you selling? Just out of curiosity. It sounds like a beautiful house. Why are you looking to get rid of it? And then be quiet and let them answer. Okay, good. So assuming that we can do all of that and, and get you what you're looking for, what kind of time frame are we working on? Mr. and Mrs. Seller, we work on your time frame. So you just let me know. A lot yeah. of times what I do. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, yeah, you're getting you're getting the four pillars, and can can you be mismatched how the conversation is going? Is there sometimes where you just get the time frame, the first uh, pillar, and then is there sometimes you get the motivation, the first pillar? Does it matter which yeah. order you take it? So it's very important to to I hate to say it like this, but this is going to come with experience. 
you kind of have to determine what kind of person you're talking to, to, to figure out which way you want to go first. So the easy answer is no, it doesn't have to start with their motivation, their price, their time frame, the condition of the house. I would have it start as naturally as you can have it start per phone call because not every person is the same. So if you're talking to someone and they seem real chipper, real like they're having a good time, all right, cool. Yeah, I have just let me know when I'm out of time, Mr. And Mrs. Seller. How's everything going today? Then you can say something like that if they're Mrs. if they're like Brady Bunch on the other phone, on the other line. You but, meet a lot of sellers though, Sean, where it's like that that grumpy dude that's like, let's get straight to it. And it's like maybe you might just get straight into the condition of the property. That is true. So if you pick something like that up, then I usually instruct my team to throw in a one liner. Hey, Mr. Seller, look, I get it. You probably called 10 or 15 times. I'm not going to waste too much of your time. I got a couple of questions. We'll get through it real quick. I'll get back to you with an offer as soon as I can. And then boom, you just go straight into, then it goes all business. And you go straight yep. into asking them about the actual house, getting the information that you actually need to get them off the phone as fast as possible. Exactly. And then there may be some openings where you can have chances at building some more rapport and loosening him up, right? Exactly. And you have to be able to pick those up as there. And it could be it could be anything. you got to be listening. Me personally, when I'm taking down notes and I'm talking to someone, I write down everything that they say, because then on the closing call, I can reference that next time. And it's like, oh, crap, he was actually listening. Yes, I was. And that helps build rapport, even on a subconscious level. Sean, we went over kind of the broad view of approaching the seller and how to let it come naturally. But to mm -hmm. Kind of going into more specifics, starting with the condition. How do you get the condition out of the seller? And what are some tips and tricks you have for the viewers that you and your team use? Sure. So first thing is I always tell my team, have a checklist of everything that you need, especially if you're going to be doing what I call and what I teach my people is conversation based. Uh, I don't want to say selling, but it is. It's, it's a conversation versus an interrogation. So you, you want to just have everything come out natural and then making notes as pieces of information that you need become available naturally through the progression of the conversation. So first and foremost, have a list of everything that you're going to need in front of you. That's a big help. And then the second thing is I usually say something like uh, to piggyback off of what I said earlier. Thanks so much, Mr. Seller. I appreciate that. You just let me know when I'm out of time. I got a couple of questions for you and then we'll, uh, I'll, you know, something I'll let you on your way or or I'll get back to you, you know, with some information, however your personality is. And then usually at that point, they say, OK, and I just start firing away. But I do it in a way that's more conversation based. So I'll say something like, tell me a little bit about the roof. Just throwing that in the beginning of a sentence, tell me a little bit more or tell me a little bit about. That's a very soft but but engaging way to get someone to open up about a certain thing. Exactly. And then if they then, give you an answer that's not satisfactory or that's very surface level, tell me more about that. That's all you have to say. It's very simple. Tell me a little bit more about that. Or exactly. how do you mean? You just keep asking questions until you get the answer that you want. Yep. John, is there some lines that you use um, to kind of, with those stern guys, sometimes you can say, tell me about the roof. And some guys are like just really short answers and everything. Is there some lines that you use to kind of get the seller to open up to learn more about the condition of the property? Yeah, so there's a difference between lines and how you posture yourself. And what I mean by that is your tone of voice. So if I get on the phone and I notice, and I can tell from the moment they answer the phone that it's one of those type of guys, I'm gonna posture myself as uh, someone who is either on their level or someone that they have to qualify to, they have to qualify themselves to me. So what do I mean by that? Uh, someone's on the phone and not necessarily being like, you know, rude or anything like that, just a stern, an A-type personality. I usually say something along the lines of, hey, Mr. Seller, nope, I get it, you're a busy guy, I'm a busy guy, I've got some questions. The more accurate you are with me, the less time I have to take on the back end double checking with you. So all I'm trying to do is figure out how much money I have to put into your house before I can make money out of it. So give me about five minutes, okay? And that's all I say. And if Love you it. say it with that kind of tone and posture it the right way, then they're going to take you seriously. There'll be a mutual respect, and they'll give you the answers. Nine times out of ten, that's how it works. Love it. Going into timeline, Sean, um, timeline is also a very important thing. We don't want to deal with somebody if they're saying, hey, I'm thinking about moving next year. 
how do we, you get the timeline of a seller out of them so we can continue to prospect them out if this is an actual lead or not? Uh, one of the more, if you're having a nice cordial conversation, one of the more easier lines that I use is I use Harry Potter a lot. I say, hey, Mr. Mrs. Seller, if this was Harry Potter world and you can wave a magic wand, how fast am I getting this done for you? Because I move at your pace. So if you want this done in a couple of weeks, sure, just let me know. Do you want it done in a couple of months? Sure, just let me know. And then I'd be quiet Perfect. after that and I let them answer the question. Exactly. Pretty simple on that one. Yeah, that now, one's pretty self explanatory I don't know too yeah. many people who are going to give you an issue on time frame. <laughs> yeah, if, if they give you an issue on that, you probably, they probably don't want to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to get you off the phone. Yeah. So going into price, how do you get the seller's price first? Um, how do you even approach getting the price out of the seller? So on that one, again, you, you kind of have to, it'll change depending on who you're talking to. But what works for me a lot is I wait it, it, with all of these pillars. You don't have to do them in any order. Me personally, me and my team, I put their price and motivation at the end. And it usually goes motivation, then price. And here's why. Because I say after they give me the condition of the property, they give me their timeline, then for me, it goes straight confusion. I have a very confused tone. It, hold on, Mr. Masella, I, I'm confused. I'm trying to be on your page. So, yeah, your property, it, it needs a little bit of work, but well, why do you want to sell it? Like, I don't get it. Like, it's a nice house. It's in a good area. Why do you want to sell it? Something along those lines. And if you have genuine confusion, they'll tell you what their motivation is. They will absolutely tell you what their motivation is. And here's a great, another trick. If they give you a surface level answer that doesn't really answer you, just stay quiet. That's literally all you have to do is stay quiet. Give it about 30 seconds. And as long as you can outlast them, they'll talk first, then they'll elaborate on whatever they just told you. That works for me about 90% of the time. Love it. And then do you kind of use the motivation that you got from the seller to build off on the price? Exactly. So once they tell me whatever their motivation is, and that's the part where if I'm on the phone for 30 minutes with a seller, 15 of those minutes is just on their motivation because you have to get their pain. If you don't know what their pain is, you cannot get them across the finish line. You have to build exactly. the gap between where they are in their pain and how to get them out of it or how to save them from future pain. That's all sales is. So exactly. yeah, so when... So when they tell me their motivation, okay, well, I, I mean, I get it, Mr. Seller. I completely understand. So with that being said, if I gave you an, an as-is, all-cash offer, what's the best price you can give me? And then I shut up. And then they'll just give me the price. If they know, if they have a price in mind, they'll give it to me. It's very rare that you come across someone who truly does not know how much they want. And that's usually someone that's pretty up there in age. And even I find it hard to believe that they haven't gone on Zillow to at least look. Yep. What about Sean? What about the guys that said, I don't know, you called me. Uh, just me oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. When it's someone like that. So I'm, I'm someone who is very busy. I'm very busy. I don't have time to, to deal with, to, to convince people to sell their house. Either you want to sell it or you don't. So if that's something like that, well, you called me. Well, hold on, Mr. Seller. Let me ask you a question. Do you actually want to sell your property? Because if you don't want to sell it, I'm not the right person for you. I'm not here to convince you to sell your house. I'm here to buy houses. And that's usually exactly. what I say. And that'll, that'll, that'll either confirm that you stop wasting your time. They're like, well, no, I'm not wanting to sell. You called me. All right. No, I completely understand. Uh, why don't I do this? I'll follow up with you in a few months and we'll kind of go from there. And I would follow up with them in three months. And start pulling away from you. Exactly. And they may stop you. They may kind of pull back when you pull away. Um, One of the most powerful tools that I've ever used uh, when doing this is the takeaway. Oh, yeah. okay. That's what you want, Mr. Masala. Hey, you know what? I'm not the person for you. I'm sorry. We were kind of close, but I can't really get there. Give me a call if anything changes. I'll go ahead and cancel this out on our end. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I didn't say I wanted to cancel. I was just saying I need a little bit more money. Now you're back negotiating again. So that takeaway works fantastic. Especially if you exactly. use it right. Exactly. And since this is a cold call, Sean, right? You absolutely don't give your number first because we never even comped the property yet, right? Like, exactly. This can kill the whole deal if you got a number blindly and didn't even comp the property yet. So yeah, whatever you do, don't ever give your price on the cold call. 
ever. You don't do that. And if they ask, well, how much do you want to give me? Well, I don't know. I had to ask you questions about the condition. I have to go talk to my realtor to see how much your place is actually worth, what the neighborhood is doing, the history, the projections. But I'll tell you what, Mr. Seller, I'm really, really good at what I do. So instead of wasting your time like all the other people are going to call you, I will call you back tomorrow with the absolute best that I can. And if we can do business, I'd love to work with you. And that's all you have to say. Shut that whole conversation down. Do you recommend for guys that are just starting out, always try to get that motivation first and then go build on price? I would say price should be the last thing because okay. asking them the price at the end gives you the, look, once the price is out of the bag, it can't, that once the cat's out of the bag, it can't go back. So if they give you some ridiculous price because you asked them in the beginning, and then you build rapport with them for 15, 20 minutes on the phone, it's going to be real hard for you to negotiate that price, even if they want to. Just ask them at the end. It gives you the most time to build rapport. It gives you the most time to build that gap from the pain that they're in or future pain that they're afraid of to, to getting you getting a solution and you being it in their head. Then you ask them about their price. You make them want to exactly. work with you first. Exactly. So that kind of touches on all the four pillars. Um, after we have the four pillars, Sean, we don't usually always go for a one call close, but if it's there, it's there. Correct. Yeah. If it's a situation and it, it's, I don't want to say it's unique. Every situation, it, it can look in, in my history. When I used to do one call closes, were they high ticket items? Yeah. But they were like 15, $20,000, not an entire house. So huh. I would say the more pushy this is my, this is just my opinion. I know that there are people who disagree with me. But in my opinion, the less pushy you are, the more desirable you are to work with. Because when I talk to my clients, they get the idea that I don't need them. I don't need you. You need my money. I don't need your house. That's why I always like to break my, my calls up into two calls. Plus, it provides more credibility. Hey, I haven't looked at your property yet, Mr. Seller. I can't give you an offer right now. That would be ridiculous. Exactly. What do you want me to do? Show you an arbitrary number right now? And then call you back tomorrow and be like, hey, I made a mistake. No, give me give me a day. Let me do it right. And I'll get you a real number. And they Perfect. will appreciate that. No one's, no one's going to argue with you if you say that to them. Exactly. Yeah, and it makes you look more legit, too. It's like now exactly. it's hard to comp over the phone while you're on the thing, too. You may you usually always have to do a two-call close just because you need to get your numbers right for the next phone call. So we went into the two-call close. It's definitely mandatory because you didn't underwrite it on the phone because the seller just picked up while you're on the dialer. So you never even had time to get your numbers. So it's always going to be a two-call close. Now, for that second appointment, John, what's your procedure for working with people? Because I know there's going to be a lot of like newbies who never got a deal that got to this part and the seller's actually looking like they're going to sell it to them. How can you and your team help them out? Um, is there a way that they can book an appointment with you instead of them doing the closing call? Um, explain this process to the, everybody. Yeah, I mean, that, that's something, like, I, I think everyone who has a desire to do this, for the most part, have the ability to do it in some capacity. But if you haven't done your first deal yet, I, I don't, it, it can't hurt to have us close it because you get to be right there. You're on the line. You're muted, obviously. The, 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 the seller doesn't know that you're there. But you get to listen to the negotiation firsthand and then immediately after it, while we're writing the contract, because that's what my that's what me and my team do, we close deals. Um, while I'm writing the contract up, I'll actually explain every step of what I did, why I did it, the methodology behind it. I, I mean, for one or two, maybe even three deals, you won't near, really need to hear it that many times. You'd have to hear one cash negotiation close, one seller financing, one uh, subject to, and maybe one novation. So four calls to get firsthand experience on how to close everything, I say is more yep. than worth it. Perfect. So, and then we'll drop the links on how to get a hold of you and how to submit a deal over to you so you and your team can hop on the phone um, and schedule that three-way call with their seller and them. And yeah. I think that pretty much sums up everything. Now, all right. So, Sean, we went into like how guys that are just starting out can partner and shadow us. Now, yeah. people that want to send it and go for the close themselves, is there some advice for after you have the four pillars, you got the condition, you got their motivation? Is there any tips and tricks on that second phone call that you use to be able to get them at the number you're looking for? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first and foremost, and, and it'll all depend on 
how you how you posture the start of the call. So if you're posturing at the start of the call as a wholesaler, then you can basically just tell them exactly how it works is what I would do. That's what I very often do. So when I'm trying to get them to my number, I usually say something, I mean, let's say we're, we're apart by 40 grand, right? Just for sake of instance, you know, I want, I want to give them a hundred, my MAO is a hundred and, and they want 140. Then I walk them through the process. I say, look, Mr. S Mr. Mrs. Seller, here's what, here's what the deal is. You know, your house isn't in the condition to be listed. And, you know, obviously that's only if that applies. Um, I'm saving you X amount of dollars on closing costs from listing it. I'm not asking you to do any repairs. I'm going to take care of all of the repairs or, or updates that need to be done. I'm going to give you cash in hand at closing, but I also have to pay your closing costs. I have to pay the repair and the updating fees for my contracting crew. And then if I go to resell this property, I have to pay the closing costs again. So there's literally no incentive for me to buy your property just to break even. This is a business. I got to make sure that I can make a profit. Exactly. And a lot of times, if you explain that to them and, and have that, and if you've had genuine empathy with their situation and finding out their motivation, subconsciously, empathy is, is reciprocated whether they want to or not. So if you actually have built a connection with them, then they will understand where you're coming from, and then you can start negotiating. And hopefully, exactly. you didn't give them your maximum number right out the gate. Hopefully, you started with a little bit lower than your MAO so that they can have the, I don't want to say illusion, but they can think that they're talking you up to their price, which they are. They're talking you up higher than what you wanted to give them initially, but you're still within range to make money on the deal. So there's exactly. a lot of things that need to take place both, like during the call itself to set you up for success for the close. And that's the yep. biggest, that's a big thing. Exactly. And would you say, Sean, the, cl the closing stage? I mean, it's, we could touch on this part for three, four more hours. It's like every, probably every closing call you have, you say something different, correct? And that is correct. Yeah. And it's just going to come over time, being on multiple closing calls understanding your seller, understanding what character of a seller they are, because it all takes into account of how you're going to close the seller. Exactly. Correct. And these are all things that have to be honed and then implemented from the moment you first call them all the way to the pause at the end when you give them your number. You have to maintain that same uh, yep. that same energy, that same poise, that same posture and confidence. And if you don't set certain things up at the beginning, you're going to have a very hard time at the end. Exactly. And yeah, the script will be in the where it'll be in a link below. Uh, it won't touch everything, but it should, it would get, it's going to give you a good idea of kind of which each stage uh, you're looking for to get out of the seller. Obviously, the closing stage in the script, it's not going to make you a master closer. That's going to come over time. And it's going to come over by just shadowing either Sean or his closers by learning different techniques. I would say, I mean, Sean, there's probably closing calls that you have where you say something new that you never even thought about and it just came over the phone and you're like, oh, that sounded pretty good. Correct. Oh God, that's happened so many times where I'm like, God, I wish I was oh, yeah. recording that. Exactly. And it's just like, it comes over time. It's just, this is a game where you're not going to be a master at it right away. So don't be nervous thinking you're going to mess up on this these calls. First thing that could happen is you don't do the deal. And yeah, you're gonna you're gonna mess up every time. Yeah. Even now, when I hang up, I was like, oh, even when I get the deal, oh, I should have said that. It's going mm -hmm. to happen. The problem, you just have to have that confidence when you're on the phone that this is the best way to help them fill that gap and avoid the pain or the future pain. If you do that and you truly believe it, then the confidence will come through your voice. Exactly. And what you always can do as a newbie is if you don't know the answer and never makes you less credible if you just say hold on let me get the answer from that for my partner or something and you call either me or sean you text us you reach out to us we'll be able to get on the phone with the seller and provide that extra expertise where you couldn't provide it at but it never makes you look unprofessional it actually probably makes you look more professional where you don't want to lie to them if you're like hey mr seller i don't want to lie to you my partner deals more on this side of the what's in between things right sean I literally, literally just had to do that yet uh, Monday. 
Yep. Literally just like, hey, Mr. Fella, you know what? That's a good question. No one's ever asked me that, so I don't know. But give me a little bit. I'll go and find out for you. Exactly. And, and if, if, the more transparent you are, the more trust you have, and it actually will probably increase the odds of you actually doing the deal with them. Exactly. That was pretty much everything going over the cold call script. You can actually go – this is actually a script that you can use after if you have a VA or if you have another person bringing you leads. You can use the same exact script for a lead as well. And that's why you see at the top of the title, I titled this, titled this, titled this cold calling slash lead script. So you can use this for an actual lead as well, because you still want to reciprocate everything that was said in the cold call from your VA or from your acquisition guy that brought you the lead. All right, you guys, see you in the next lesson and we're out.